Can you talk about how you testified before the U.S. House of Agriculture on the importance of no-till to agriculture? Yeah, this must have been 1973 or 1974, and I went to the committee. And it was a committee that uh, was really interested in conservation, but it was pretty much the traditional practices of w grass waterways and uh, ponds and everything. They didn't know much about no-till, so hopefully I got them on the right track to thinking about no-till. And I could tell from the questions they asked that they didn't know much about no-till at that time. Why have you been a champion of no-till? Can you talk about why it's important to you and why you think it should be taken seriously as a farming practice? Sure, it's a way of not only conserving our soils, but uh, saving on fuel costs. We're we're in the world. We're looking at problems with oil supplies, uh, time and labor. It's you know you're cutting out three or four trips during the year over the uh, field. You may be able to plant, spray, and harvest, and so that's only three trips in a year's time. If you plant cover crops, maybe you got another trip in there. But in the old days, you were making seven, eight, or nine trips across the field. And every every trip across the field is costing you two or three dollars an acre to make. Mm -hmm. So and the other, the other thing is with no-till, we've seen people who uh, all of a sudden uh, are expanding and uh, growing crops on maybe twice as many acres as they were with other tillage practices. So it's, it's really caught in on. The government supported it f pretty much through the NRCS and uh, it's been doing pretty well. It's got exciting with the growth we've seen recently in increased acres. Mm -hmm. um. What are some of the key moments, inventions, or products in recent history that have impacted the adoption of no-till? Well, you go back to the mid, uh, when we started in the 1970s, Alice Chalmers had about the only no-till planter there was, and they had, the, they had the serrated colders, and that's what got it all started. In the 1980s, mid-80s, John Deere came out with the 750 drill, which let people no-till not only small grains, but soybeans and narrow rows. Uh, one of the big big things that came around in the late 80s or so was glyphosate or Roundup or, um, that came from Monsanto and uh, because that really, one of the big problems early on with no-till was weed control mm -hmm. and uh, Roundup really helped that and then later on we got in the 90s we got Roundup ready corn, soybeans, cotton and that's when no-till really took off because you could uh, weed control was so much easier. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, now we're getting into weed resistance concerns, so we gotta watch what we're doing, and farmers have gotta use more than one type of chemistry if they're gonna survive. Thanks for watching, and for more information, visit www.no-tillfarmer.com. Frank, thanks for taking your time to speak with us today. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Laura.